the maintenance on an old machine is $100, but expected to increase $25 each year thereafter. What's the present value um, that needs to be set aside today if you want um, to pay the maintenance for eight years, for an eight year period? Um, interest rate is 10%. So essentially here, you have to bring everything to uh, present value. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with what we know. What do we know? So we have uh, $100 this year. So $100 represent actually your annual amount, right? So A is $100. Okay. But it's expected to increase to $25 each year after that. So that's your gradient. So G is actually $25. Let's go and find the definition of G uh, to kind of refresh your memory here. Um, G is um, uniform gradient amount per interest period. So pretty much that's how much it increases every year or whatever period it is given. All right, so that's $25. Now we have to bring everything to present worth, right? And then I is, is here, of course, 10%. Okay, all right, so to bring the annual amount to P, Remember, what do we know? We know A, and we need P, we need a present value. So that's P given A. And in order to cancel it out, you gotta multiply here by A. So you have A, I, and N. So this cancels out, so that'll give you P. So that's what we need, right? So remember, that's how, that's, that's a trick pretty much. As long as you can cancel these two, then leave out what you're actually looking for, then you got the correct formula. So always start with that. Always start with what you know. So P given A. And then in order to cancel it out, you have to multiply by A. And A is given, so you it's a known value. It's a known value. All right. So this has to be added to the $25, right? Because that's how much it increases every year. But $25 is gradient. So with that being said, uh, we have G. But we need the present value, so this got to be P. What's P given G, right? So, of course, in order to cancel out G, I have to multiply here by the gradient value and then keep up with uh, I and N. This is it. So you set up your formula correctly and everything will actually be P because this goes away, you get, you're left with P and then G cancels out, so you're left with P, so you know you have the correct formulas. All right, so now all we have to do is just plug in uh, with our factor table. So this is $100. Going into the table, we're looking for P A, P given A, 10% and eight years. P A, 10% right here. P A, eight years. So this is 533.49. Plus 25. PG, 10% in eight years. PG, 10% eight years. That's 
seven is that is that right p g eight sixteen zero twenty eight seven not forty seven no, yeah, it's actually correct. 16, 0, 28, 7. All right, so you do your math. Let me use a calculator. So this is 100 times 533, 49, plus 25 times 16, 2, 8. So 900 and... Thirty-three dollars nine hundred and thirty-three, and you can peer check me on this nine thirty-four. Excuse me, nine thirty-four. Oh, why is my eraser this big? Oh. Look. I need to fix that. I'm really wasting time right now. Um, so I got 933. Oh, what is this? 934. I keep saying 933. 934.20. So of course, I mean this is the cost, so it got to be a minus sign here. But that's that's besides the point. The point here is to make sure that you get the formula correctly, and um, using your factor table um, correctly as well. But before you can use your factor table, you got to understand how to set it up. So always make sure that um, this value here cancels out with whatever is inside, and then you're left with what you're looking for. So I'm looking for p. A and A cancels out, so I know I have the right formula. So this reads P given A. This is what I need, and this is what's given. G is what I, um, P is what I need, G is what's given. And uh, you don't multiply here by P because you don't know what P is. So make sure you set it up correctly, um, and then plug it and get the uh, correct value. Pretty simple. And this should be a minus sign because it's a cost, but that's besides the point. All right.